Namaskara. Uh, I have a question in regards to uh, male-female relationships. I understand that um, over time there's been progression where we seem to have been more in a male-dominated male -dominated society for so long and we're seeing that transitioning to where it should be where we see the feminine arising more and more and more. So, in a male-female relationship, with what I'm perceiving as a change, how does one navigate? Uh, because there's the kinds of dominant, submissive roles that can change back and forth. But with all of that, there's the egos of male and the egos of the female. And that's where uh, a lot of the confusion comes for me, is because as a male, yes, I don't want to be told what to do. I understand that. And uh, I also know that the woman is the one that is the creator, the one that births and brings forth. I think where I get a little bit antsy about is the trust factor. When I, I know my ego is there, and possibly this person's ego is there, what would be a practice to know what the truth is in conversation and in relating with male-female? That makes sense. I think the most important thing is to remember very clearly that these two creatures, they just cannot understand each other. It's like a, a tiger and, a, and a, an antelope talking to each other. They, they do realize that they are kind of something common there, but it's like two people with a wall in between, you know, Morse coding each other and uh, the, the whole trick is to learn how to interpret that Morse code. Yes. And if you forget one, one of those knocks, then you've lost the whole picture for, for the day, basically. So, that is one thing to remember. Another thing to remember is that in a partnership, especially with male and female, one of the, one of the most important aspects of that is that each is breaking down the ego of the other. Which is why if you see in ancient societies, like, like the subcontinental societies, there was such a strong insistence on partnership. You know, if someone was blind, they'd be paired up with someone who's deaf or something. But people are, even today, are just pushed together to be in a partnership. Because the understanding is that that is where the ego is broken down the, the best. Now, having said that, if a man has to, and, and since you as male are asking if a man has to deal with the female outside, he has to connect with the soul, because the soul, the Ardha Nareshwari, the concept of Ardha Nareshwari, which is actually a description of half male, half female, which is how the soul is perceived. It is perceived as with the face of the female and the face of the male. It's a, it's, a, it's a visual description or a picturization of it. But what it's actually saying is that when you, as a male, train yourself to surrender to your soul and go with that impulse, the soul 
will be female in nature and impulse you in such a way that you are able to deal with that creature that you cannot understand, which is the female. And this doesn't apply only in South India, it applies all over the world with everyone, whatever culture you may come from and however, you know, however modern and, and civilized the society is, so-called civilized that you come from, it applies to everyone. Because the surrender to the soul is what makes a male more male and a female more female. What that means is that the ability for a female or a male to live in this world in a at least minor state of joy is dependent on the connect they have with their own soul. How that translates in your behavior on a day-to-day -day behavior is that when you are tuned in, you will just know what to say to keep that moment in its truth. You were mentioning dominant and, you know, males are sometimes dominant, sometimes they are submissive in a situation. That is indeed true. And it is the soul that will impulse you into being dominant when it is required to be dominant and submissive when it's required to be submissive in your relation with the female outside. You have practically no other way of ensuring that you have some modicum of peace if you're with a female. I'm sorry, did I? Not surprised. <laughs> I said that you have no other way that I know of to ensure that you have a modicum of peace in dealing with the female outside. And if it is the female we know that we are talking about, then you better up the ante. You better get moving. She's not going to let you get away so easily. Isn't that true? There she sits and smiles. Mm. Surrender, bend down, down, surrender to the soul and discern between the ego and the impulse of the soul because that is going to... it's your key to knowing how to deal with her. It'll tell you, be quiet in this moment, speak up, put your foot down. You can always check, it's a material reality, it's a material presence which is there impulsing you. So, you have no other choice but to go there, where else are you going to find out? Where? Like where? In the cosmic experience? That didn't work. It didn't. You were out there yes. for long enough, so it didn't work. So you have to come, now you're back here. Your moon suit is off and you're there and you have to now deal with this creature called female on earth. And there are very, very few challenges on this planet which are tougher than that one. Because the female is such a complex it's being. <laughs> All you have to do is to surrender, just bend down. And, 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 you can also bend down in front of her. We have a very classical, amazing Kriya called the Sashtanga Namaskar, the Kriya of stretching out with her hands outstretched, asking for forgiveness and waiting to receive truth. If you do that in front of her, you'll have her tamed, I tell you. <laughs> How are you going to do it? How are you going to bend down in front of a female? Just do it. Ah, exactly. Just do it. It's about surrender, bend down. Bend in front of the cows, bend in front of the gods, bend in front of the temples, bend in front of wherever you can find a place to go down, on the floor I mean. In the Sashtanga Namaskar, that is a training to deal with females. Else, men 
And when you bend outward, you also bend inward in that moment and then you're in tune with the soul, so that, that narrative that has been imprinted on you, that, that conqueror narrative, patriarchal conqueror narrative that makes you bend down to, you know, greedy capital, to serving, actually, greed. That's what your inheritance is, that's what's that's what you defeat when you bend down and surrender to the soul and that's where you pick up your true maleness because up until now your maleness has been dominated by greed and not even your own greed. So it's about bending down, it just creates the possibility in your system to to know how to actually deal with the female, to see the divinity in that female, you know. Because for a, for a male of your cultural inheritance, when you look at a female, either she's Mother Mary or she's Mary Magdalene. You know what I mean? These two figures to actually associate with in your, in your to say, uh, understanding of archetypes. And that has to change because there's an entire spectrum of female in that female. And that spectrum of that entire spectrum has to reveal itself to you and it cannot reveal itself to you if you don't bend down to your master, to the Antar Guru. You, it's a material thing. All the, the experiences of the Samadhi states and the cosmic experiences and the transcendental states will not open your eyes to the terrestriality and materiality of this creature in front of you that you have to deal with, whether it's a wife, a child, a sister, a boss, whatever. The males now will have to take that up. And you can... You've already started, haven't you? Mm -hmm. yes. But you're looking a bit exhausted today, has she been putting you through? <sighs> putting you through the ringer. Uh, I don't think purposely, <laughs> but yes, that's the feeling. In the moment when you don't know how to handle the situation as a male, start to feel the soul, just say, I'm going to speak now, I'm going to say something, is it the thing for me to do? You'll get a yes or a no. In that desperate state, for sure you'll get an answer. You don't sound very convinced. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, please tell me if you have any other better solution than that. Where are you going to go for the answer? Well, Except to the soul. Yes. <laughs> I, I used to do horse, go to horses and animals because they don't talk back. Mm. <laughs> it worked out really well. Mm. Point. But I think she's a two-legged creature, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, mm -hmm. and talks back. Yes, and doesn't have a long tail. It's true, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> it's about surrender, John. Yes. It is about surrender. Yes. Surrender, bending down. Surrender is not laying down your weapons, John. It is picking them up shielding yourself against that ego and moving into a truth state which is not some exalted, half spaced out state but very present, very here and now, eyes open, tuning into her, tuning into her and you tune into her because you tune into the soul. in every moment. It's, it's, it's a practice, it's a sadhana that is spoken about here. We're not in a wellness course, you know, this is adhyatma, it's about the soul, it's about self-realization, it's a sat sang, a group of people sitting here yearning for the truth, else they wouldn't waste their time sitting here, they would be out there eating tikkis on the road, yes. you know. It's a, it's a yearning for the truth. And then, there is a mirroring of that happening here. You have to make that way in. You've been out there, you've come back now.
नमस्कार